Hello, I'm Jeff Swigris. I am a pulmonologist and director of the Interstitial Lung Disease Program at National Jewish Health in Denver. Interstitial pneumonia with autoimmune features, or IPATH, is a research classification and should not be used as a clinical summary diagnosis. At this time, it is unclear whether patients who meet IPATH classification criteria behave differently or have a different prognosis than patients who have idiopathic disease or those with classifiable connective tissue disease related interstitial lung disease. We can think of IPATH as residing between those two entities. Classification criteria for IPATH include the presence of an interstitial pneumonia, exclusion of alternative etiologies, including a classifiable connective tissue disease, and meeting features in at least two of the three classification domains, which are clinical, serologic, and morphologic. Features in the clinical domain include fissuring or ulceration of the digits, Raynaud's phenomenon, palmar telangiectasia, inflammatory arthritis, and skin rash. Features in the serological domain include autoantibodies like high titer ANA or ANA in a nucleolar pattern of any titer or ANA in a centromere pattern of any titer and various other circulating autoantibodies including anti-CCP, double-stranded DNA, and anti-synthetase antibodies to name a few. In the morphologic domain, high-resolution CT scan features and histopathology patterns are included. I'd like to make a note about UIP, or usual interstitial pneumonia pattern, on high-resolution CT scan. Having a UIP pattern on HRCT does not preclude classification as IPATH. However, points are not given for a UIP pattern. Thus, patients can meet classification criteria for IPATH, but have a different clinical summary diagnosis. The following cases illustrate this point. Consider a 67-year-old male, former smoker, with long-standing Raynaud's phenomenon and ANA in a speckled pattern at a titer of 1 to 640. He has a UIP pattern on high-resolution CT scan. Because this man meets diagnostic criteria for IPF, he was started on an antifibrotic medication. However, because he meets IPAP criteria, it is suggested that he be monitored closely over time for the development of a definable connective tissue disease. Consider a 32-year-old woman with rapidly progressive fibrosis, a long-standing history of Raynaud's phenomenon, and a high titer ANA in a homogeneous pattern. She was seen by a rheumatologist and does not meet criteria for a classifiable connective tissue disease but there are certainly features in her case, including her young age and female gender, that would suggest systemic autoimmunity is playing a role. Because she has rapidly progressive disease, she was started on immunosuppressive therapy rather than antifibrotic therapy. Like our 67-year-old gentleman, she should be monitored closely over time for the development of a classifiable connective tissue disease. In summary, IPATH is a research classification. It should not be used as a clinical summary diagnosis. There is much to learn about patients with IPATH and how they behave over time, how they should be treated, and how they respond to that treatment.